Hi friends! Welcome to episode 24 of the M to the 3rd Knitting Podcast. My name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the 3rd, on Instagram, Ravelry, and YouTube. And I'm coming to you today from Boston, Massachusetts. But I have some exciting news, which is that Kay and I are going to be moving in June of this year to Portland, Oregon. Um, I truly can't tell you how thrilled I am. <laughs> um, we've been in Boston for about five years and we're both from California originally and met in the Bay Area and um, we it's really taken us probably two or three years to definitively decide on a location and um, yeah that is our that's our goal, and I am beyond thrilled. Um, just the circumstances of my job and Kay's job, um, it's finally lined up to accommodate this type of a move. So um, I'm hoping that not just us, but many people at that point in the States will have access to the vaccine because um, I'm not super looking forward to moving cross-country in the middle of a pandemic, but um, that being said, it is happening and uh, we'll make it work regardless. So yeah, I know a ton of my podcast viewers um, live in Portland. I'm very excited for what that means in terms of like the community that I am a part of. Um, I am going to miss the Boston knitting community a lot, but um, it's time for us to head west, and uh, yeah, I'm really thrilled that it's going to be happening. So, with that out of the way, <laughs> happy 2021. Um, I mentioned this in the video that I posted earlier um, that was sort of going over my 2020 makes. Hey, Moose. Moose is being a traviesa, as always. Can you just chill out? Bud. So if you are curious as to what I finished and um, what I made over 2020, definitely head to the video that I posted um, earlier this month and check that out. But today I'm going to be going over works in progress, um, some mending, some future mending, and talking about, yeah, generally some other stuff. So <laughs> um, I'm really excited that you're here. I'm really excited to be here. It feels a little funny sitting in front of a camera after doing Vlogmas for the whole month of December because that was so like spur of the moment, like talking to the camera and now it feels very formal. Um, but I know it's not. So yeah, let me dive right in. Share with you guys what I've been working on. Um, so number one, I have been thinking about creative ways to use up my odds and ends. Um, I made, I have made now two granny square like crochet blankets and I, we use them all the time. They're really just lap blankets. They could probably um, be a bit bigger, but um, I'm very happy like with how heavy they are, how well they work, um, and all of that. So the way that I did those was I looked through all of the odds and ends that I had in my stash. I kind of keep all of the little balls of yarn that are left over after knitting a pair of socks or really any of my projects in these little glass jars. And when they get really full, I sort of lay them out and I would group them by color. It turns out I knit a lot of purple. So one year I made a purple granny square blanket. And then when we added some wallpaper to our living room that was kind of in the realm of like greens and pinks and oranges, um, I took my odds and ends as well as some full skeins that I bought um, and made another one that sort of coordinated better with the space. And um, so one of those usually lives in here. It's currently in the living room because I was so cold the other night. Um, and then the other one just is always in the living room. 
So I didn't really want to do another crochet blanket like that because I started another one, which I'll show you later. Um, but I also just like, it, it's a lot of work and it's, it fills, and I've talked about this before, it sort of like fills this hole that knitting doesn't always fill for me of putting colors together because, you know, when I'm knitting a sweater for myself, I don't, I'm like very focused on wearability and um, that for me wouldn't necessarily be wearable. That doesn't mean that it wouldn't be at all ever, but um, for these particular blankets, they're not. So I pulled out like all of my scrap yarn as well as some full skeins that I had like wound up and maybe started using for a project and then decided not to use, etc., etc. And I put all of them in like Roy G. Biv, a rainbow gradient. And I decided to make this massive magic knot ball with, so basically it starts at this like red and then, and it sort of is mixed up, but it goes to all of the orange yarns that I have. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what are you doing with this giant ball? And so what I decided to do was take this skein of this like pink speckle yarn that was in my stash. I have no idea what it is. And start knitting a tube. So I'm taking one, I'm basically doing one row of each and you'll see what I'm kind of getting. So right now it's not very exciting because I haven't even transitioned to another color. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do, so I started off thinking that I would do maybe like eight rows and then switch and then do eight more and then switch. But then I had this idea that if I just make a massive tube, okay? So this is 64 stitches. It looks very big because this yarn is Brooklyn Tweed Loft, so it's very plump. Um, but that will stop being so plump once the next yarn starts. Um, but so what I thought is that I could do this massive tube that was like a gradient going from red all the way to purple and then into neutrals and just like knit this tube throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, when I have this big tube that's like a gradient, I can turn them into socks for Christmas for everyone. And then I could have this photo of like a rainbow gradient of like scrap socks. <laughs> Look, I'm like really excited about this idea. I'm not sure that I'm like committed to it. <laughs> but as you heard, this year is going to be really busy um, with a lot of change. And so I wanted sort of this like long haul project that was very easy and I didn't have to think about. Um, so I'm doing it using helical knitting, which is um, one of my favorite techniques. So I will put a link up here um, if you're interested in knowing what that is. Uh, and yeah, so <laughs> I'll keep you updated. I'm not, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure that I will keep with it, but I love the idea. I think it could be really cool. I guess that's all I have to say about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> if it works and if I stick with it, it'll be really cool. If not, then it's a great idea. <laughs> I think I'm okay with it just being that. So that's one. And this is this yarn bowl that I'm leaving this massive ball in is from the Holland Hoof um, farm store. I got this bowl at Vogue Knitting Live last year before the world stopped. And I really... I like it a lot and it's perfect for that massive ball okay so that's just one little thing I cast on I knit like six pairs of socks last year um, which is still a lot but not as many as I've knit in previous years because I think Kay and I are like pretty set on socks 
Um, <sighs> yeah, so that might be a good like alternative to like the number of socks that we have. I don't know. Again, it's like, it's a good idea, but it might just be too boring for me to stick with. I'm not sure. Okay, so then in my last video, again, the one uh, where I talked about all the 2020 makes, I mentioned that Kay and I found out that we're gonna be aunt and uncle, which I am just so thrilled about. So exciting. So I started this little sweater. Um, so this is the pick and mix cardigan. I will definitely put the link below. I can't remember the designer's name. Um, it is not supposed to be knit in the round, but um, I am doing it in the round and I added some stitches for steaks because I didn't want to do any stranded color work while purling. Also, sorry, I lost some stitches. My little thing came undone. So, um, I'm using uh, the like festive, um, festive mini skein set from uh, Wooly Mammoth. It was the first time I've used her yarn. I'm really enjoying it. The colors are just like so cute. Um, yeah, so I'll do the little arms and then stick it and it'll be one of the many, I'm sure, that I will knit before my little nibbling is born. Nibbling, if you don't know, is the gender neutral term for niece or nephew. And you do not know the sex and definitely don't know the gender. So yeah, a little nibbling. Okay, so that I'm really excited about. I'm gonna keep working on that. Um, and then, okay. So if you watch my Vlogmas, you've definitely seen this. Um, I, for really Kay's Christmas present is sort of where um, this started from. But Kay went to UC Berkeley, which is mascot is the bears and their colors are blue, like navy blue and gold. Um, and we saw Max the Knitter's unbearable hoodie pattern. And it's so cute, it's adorable. And so we decided to do that for Kay's um, Christmas sweater. Ba -ba. So like I said um, in Vlogmas videos, I really need to block it because this is puckering, which just tends to happen when you have these like long drops of color work and I'm sure blocking will take that out. And so after I finished all this color work, which you guys, there's a lot of three color rows in there. Um, and then I separated the sleeves. Kay has really been knitting the body of this almost exclusively by themselves. So they've, they've made it a pretty good, pretty good bit. Um, they still have a lot to go because it's not a crop top. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're working on that. And then, yeah, we're basically tag team knitting this, which is super fun. It's gonna end up with a hood at the top and long sleeves. And I think it's going to get a lot of wear. And I'm using um, this yarn from the fiber company, Erin Moore Light. Oh, can you see that? Come on, focus, bud. Yeah, there you go. Um, it has all these like really pretty tweed colors and it is 80% wool, 10% silk, and 10% cashmere. And it really feels wool and spun. It's very lightweight, um, but there's like a little bit of the strength that comes from that silk and cashmere. Well, the silk, not really the cashmere. So yeah, it's, that's really, um, I'm really excited for that and it's just been nice. It's a very cute sitting and watching TV and knitting together while watching the Great British Baking Show. I'm like, cool, we're like 75. Um, <laughs> uh, look, no regrets. I love my life. <laughs> um, some long, I have one long standing whip that you will know of which is this Creostal shawl. I won't spend long 
if I'm talking about it, but I am finally at the point where I am doing the decreases. However, I took the needles off because I'm using them for the baby cardigan. Um, but yeah, I'm finally to the point where I'm decreasing on this side, so it shouldn't be long now before it's done. And like I've said, I'm very excited to wear it. Just haven't been working on it much. Um, so I just need to hunker down and do that. And I think like on a weekend soon, I'll probably put on like, I don't know, I don't know, like a really good movie and just crack it out. I have a feeling that that's like probably what's going to happen. Okay, I have one more whip that I want to share with you before I transition into mending and um, plans for future knitting. Um, so let me grab that. So I bought myself an advent calendar um, from a dyer in Denmark. Is that right? Yeah, from a dyer in Denmark who used natural dyes. Um, I sort of decided late in the game that I wanted an advent calendar. Um, and I went on Etsy and just searched for naturally dyed ones. And I found one from Favariat Lund. And I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you watch my vlogmas, you saw it. And I s decided to make a, like I said, crochet blanket with my skeins. So right now I'm only three, six, nine skeins into it. So it's gonna be pretty, pretty big and it's pretty long. Um, it's fingering weight, it's very sparkly, and this in between, this white color, which I'm a little worried I'm gonna run out of, but um, is a yarn that I was doing some iron experiments on. So it's like mostly white, but it's like a little bit um, tan. I had like the leftovers of one of these. So I finished that off and now I had this whole other skein um, that I kind of just started using. And I'm doing the stripes in order of how I opened them. So this will be the next one. I have them all hanging up still on their little garland. Um, so that I don't lose the order. They're pretty cute, like hanging in the dining room. Um, so yeah, but soon I will probably take them down and like put a little, I don't know, wrapper around them to like keep the number. But I've been really enjoying that, although I kind of have lost steam, but that's kind of how crochet goes for me. Um, when I'm sort of in between projects, I tend to pick it up and do a bunch of it. And so I'm not gonna rush it. There's no need to rush it. Um, I think this is probably gonna be the year of like slow and steady <laughs> knits. Um, and, and that's very okay for, with me. Um, in that theme, let me tell you about my plan for this next knit. Um, so I did put a little swatch on my blocking board. So I had a cardigan that was ready to wear from Target, I think. Yeah, Target, that was basically in this color, which is the best color in the whole wide world. Amy Beth from Fat Squirrel will agree with me. It's Honey by Quince & Co. It's basically like a chartreuse pea soup mustard, but it like looks good on everyone. Yeah, it's a really great color. So um, I've known for a while that I wanted to basically create, like knit a version of that cardigan that I had for a really long time that I finally had to admit didn't fit anymore and um, gave it away. So earlier, um, not earlier this year, last year, um, we had like an employee, I don't even know what it was. It's It was by HR at work and it was like an employee raffle for a gift card to a local business. And so I chose our local yarn store um, which they like happily obliged. So it was only, it was, I mean only, 
it was a $25 gift card that didn't pay for all of the yarn. Um, but I decided to buy a sweater quantity with that chunk taken out of Quince & Co. Uh, Chickadee, no, I'm sorry, Quince & Co. Finch, which is their fingering weight, in the color Honey. So that's my first swatch. I did it on a US 2. It's too tight. So now I'm doing a second swatch on US 3s. And the cardigan that I decided to knit is very simple. Um, it's an Isolde pattern. I mean, hold on. It's an Isolde pattern, so it's not necessarily simple, but it is just like a plain stockinette crew neck cardigan. So again, I don't think it's simple. I don't think that's fair to say about any of his oldest patterns, but it's just gonna be a lot of stock in it. Um, so I'm pretty sure that the size three is gonna be perfect. Um, and I'm really excited for it to be done. <laughs> and so that I could be wearing it because again, this is just gonna be another long haul kind of knit, slow and steady. Maybe I should call them mar marathon knits because that's better than long haul. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my plan for now. Um, I'm, I think it's good though because this year I'm really trying to hunker down and dye a bunch of yarn, make some more stickers. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really doing a lot of work and I'm really also hoping to put out two or three knitting designs that I'm working on. Um, so I think it's okay to have the other knitting that I'm doing kind of just be like plain stockinette that I don't have to um, pay super close attention to. So yeah, I have got more whips than I normally do happening right now, but I think that's just circumstance and I don't think that's a problem. I think I'll just keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's my, that's my like large amount of whips. <laughs> I also wanted to talk a little bit about mending. So in both a recent episode, I think at the time that I'm recording this, it was the most recent episode of both the Gentle Knitter podcast and the Fiber Tales podcast. They both sort of talked about <laughs> some disappointments that they've had with Mondim by Retrosaria. And I have also talked about this before. <laughs> These are like my favorite socks that I've ever knit in terms of fit. You know, I've talked quite a bit about not super wash wool sock yarn and I do I do prefer them in terms of warmth especially as I've been home so much and I've basically like been wearing them kind of more like slippers than by like socks in shoes um I had I basically had a hole in these like the second I cast them off I have to say and so that was like the first patch that I did. Right under like the ball of my foot and that's held up pretty well. Then I got a hole down in the heel. And so I did do a little patch and it's like held up decently. This is superwash and nylon, but it was wearing out already. So I did my like cheater way. I mean, it's not really a cheater. I shouldn't say that, but um, I felted some raw wool and it's not cute, frankly, um, but I felted raw wool on the inside of the sock, both here and on this one, which you can kind of see from the outside because I used a dark wool. And then I got another... <laughs> freaking hole on this sock. So that is like one, two, three, four, five holes in these socks. And the other, the thing that um, Nicole from The Gentle Knitter was talking about is that 
the colors of the skeins changed and you can see on this sock that like about here they joined a new skein and the color is super different. So, you know, I, I really like this wool and I don't think that it should be marketed as a sock yarn, frankly. Um, I actually have a sweater quantity of it in my stash for a pretty involved Marie Wallen pattern. It's not like the perfect yarn for a, a colorwork sweater, but I think it's going to work better than for socks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I have to mend that little hole and I'll keep you updated on how that wears but it's just kind of like, it shouldn't be this bad, in my opinion. Um, I also have this pair of socks that um, is also with just a superwash, um, not also, but it's with just a superwash yarn that doesn't have any nylon in it, and uh, I have, as you can see, two patches on this um, heel and toe, and you can also see that the color, these were dyed with mushrooms, the color, not by me, um, but the color is fading from the sole of the foot. And then on this one, I think I probably didn't go far enough, but I've got a hole there and a hole at the ball again. So these also fit super well and because they were like house socks that I knit um, I just kind of came up with the pattern. Uh, right when I moved to Boston they're pretty sentimental so I'll just keep mending them I guess. Um, but I, I'm curious if you would like to share when <laughs> do you give up? <laughs> on a pair of socks. Like, how many times do you mend them? Yeah, I'm just, I'm curious. Um, I think if I had a compost pile, I would feel more okay saying goodbye to them. <laughs> um, especially the ones that don't have any nylon in them, which both of these don't. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, like, how, <laughs> how long do you keep stuff? I mean, you know, those aren't like the pretty pristine knits that I usually show because I'm either in the process of knitting them or I'm wearing them. But I think it's important to show that like these are worn and they're mended and I wear them a lot. Um, and you know, this reinforced heel is looking great. Um, you know, again, it's a little worn, but that's like beautiful, I think. So. Yeah, i super curious about that. Let me know. And then the other mending that I wanted to show you, so I knit this cardigan uh, last year, and it's using the Coco Knits method. It's with some Barocco, like, tweed yarn. I wear it a good amount. It's like a three-quarter length sleeve and just a crew neck cardigan. Um, and I noticed that there were holes in the armpit. So I did, again, my lazy <laughs> needle felting method and just patched those up with some similar color. And it's in the armpit, like, it doesn't really matter too much. Did I do it on both sides? Uh, no, just the one, I had the hole. So yeah, that's just, you know, just keeping it, keep it, it fresh and also I can tend to get a little lazy with mending and let it get worse. It gets worse than it needs to be before I intervene. So I'm trying to get a little bit better about, you know, when it's bad, which is like these, um, setting them aside um, so I can get to them. So yeah, that's kind of just what I've been working on. Um, let me tell you what I'm wearing too. I'm wearing 
the Together Shawl by Sophia Camaborn. Um, I have talked about this before, but I wanted it longer but not wider, so I added some short row garter edge to it, which I think is super cute. <laughs> and I knit these with um, BC Garn Bio Shetland, which is a yarn that I really love, like for real. And then this cardigan is the Sassy Cardigan, um, knit in Peace Fleece, and it's by Peace Fleece slash Hairsville um, design. So yeah, both of those have been getting a lot of wear. They're both very warm. It's very cold today in Boston. I think it's below freezing. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening, you guys. There's so much going on. I'm so thrilled that it is 2021. I know you are too. <laughs> um, one of the things that has like super kept me afloat last year going into this year is the Slack channel that I have set up for podcast viewers like yourself. So if you're interested in bo body positive knitting and sewing, natural dyes, um, what else? <laughs> like fiber shed, uh, natural wools, cottons, all of that. Um, We'd really love to have you in the community. Um, the Slack link is down below, so if you want to sign up, please know that you are more than welcome. We host weekly, at this point it's been weekly, um, Zoom knit hangouts, which I've been really enjoying. Um, I think everyone is. So if you'd like to be up to date about when those are happening, also a great reason to join the Slack channel. And yeah, I'm just so happy that you're here. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. You guys are making this possible for me to do and uh, couldn't be here without you. So please know how grateful I am. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do that. Super easy, free way to support your favorite makers. And um, I'll, I'll see you next time. Bye.